everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I am from Western New York. Blue Bike and Doyle, he catches all my mistakes, and the other day I forgot to mention that I was from Western New York. Well, hello there, Mr. Doyle, how are you? I remembered to say it today. Now, I don't know if I'll make any other mistakes. I'm sure you'll catch them if I do. Um, Jim was outside working on his motorcycle. It's looking like a motorcycle. It's almost done, yeah? How's yeah, it coming? I have to put the seat and the, your hand grips on, yeah. The seat and the hand grips. That's good. Which hand grips? The ones Grip up front? Yours. Mine yours. that are next to my chair that I never yeah. use. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I never use them is that seat is like sitting in your dining room chair. You are so comfortable and you feel very safe back there, even though you're blowing in the breeze, but it's got the extra wheels and that's why I think I feel extra safe on the bike. As long as other cars see us, I'm good. And I wear pink, I wear bright colors so that they can see us. And I have a pink helmet. I just wear brighter colors. And sometimes I wear my one jacket that's really hot pink, but it has to be pretty warm to wear that. Well, today I was talking to Jim and I said, how did I find different ones, different different channels? And I was trying to think, how did I find them? There's a few that I watch and I'm thinking, how did I come across them? And then I remembered <clears throat> because the one I was thinking about was Bob's channel. Hi, Bob. Uh, you, you mentioned me today. You are such a funny fella. And, um, and who is Bob? Oh, yeah. Bob is Mountain Crest Farms. <laughs> That's who he is. And I was thinking, how the heck did I find him? And then I was thinking, I bet it was Susie from Out West Homestead. But then I thought, how did I find Susie? Susie, how did I find you? I don't remember. Do you remember? Or did you find me? <laughs> I don't know which way it went. But it's funny because you, you are watching these channels and you wonder, how did you find them? Like Green Dream Projects. How did I find you? I don't know unless I was looking how to do things in the desert. And... Um, I don't remember Maybe how I. Offshoot of. Uh, I don't know how Justin I found Rhodes. him. It might. I don't know. I found Justin. How did I find him? I, there's a lot of them that I found, and I. I wonder how did I find them? What was I looking up that made me come across them? I typically would be in the craft section and looking up things that way, or crochet stuff, because I. I've tried to crochet different things. I made con converse sneakers out of yarn one time and I actually um, did pretty good they're out in the out in the building so I can't even show you but I did make a few pairs I made I made one pair and then I thought oh this is kind of fun so let's make another pair and so I ended up making probably four pairs I've given one pair away and I also when I was making the purse the pop tab purses that's how I found out how to make them was watching um, Spanish speaking ladies and the baskets the same thing they were all in Spanish but your eyes if you can see what they're doing you can figure it out and so that's how I did that and then there was the bead person that I was making beads I, I don't even know how, who it was and then the bow person and I, I, there's so many of you out there that I would I must be I typed in a word and you pop up and I look and I think oh you look like you're pretty interesting then there's the people that make pop-up cards I'm not good at that so I do watch them but I don't know how to do them and then how to separate a napkin and and make a card with a napkin the, all these things are exciting and fun well that was what I was thinking earlier and I wanted to tell you that the gold wing was looking good oh rental property that was another I wrote everything on my little envelope today why do you use an envelope oh because I didn't find my notebook and it was somewhere I have like four or five of them floating around and it's probably they're probably all in the other room and I didn't feel like going to look so and this was close by and probably if I'd walked through the doorway I might have forgot what I was going in there for and then I would have to back up and 
I still might might have forgot. Okay, I have rental property on here, sell or rent. Today, Emily, my my child that never calls me. Hi, Emily. You watched the other video, and she got back to me real quick. Um, but um, she came by today to discuss the one house, the one that is going to be empty in de the end of December. It's a really cute little house. In fact, I said to Jim, when I'm old and can't get around, that'd be the perfect house for an old lady. <laughs> but that's assuming I'd live longer than him. <laughs> I'm not going to. I think we're going to go at the same time. That's the way I'm planning it. So we'll see. Um, never know. But um, she came by and I, and because she really would like to live in that little house. She's been asking me for a long time. And every time I would say no because I didn't want her dog doing messes in that house and I didn't think she could keep it clean enough. So I've kind of not wanted her to because it's more space, more space, and more mess is what I was thinking. So the rule number one would be she has to get one of those special carriers and I think that's going to be her Christmas present. So Emily, you're getting something for Christmas, so don't buy a, a dog kennel carrier or whatever they're called. They have these real cute ones for um, tiny dogs where they, it's like a two room apartment kind of thing where it's got the metal, it's metal, it's a, it's a cage looking thing, but you have a door where you enter and that's where your sleeping and food area is. And then you go on the other side and that's where your pooping and peeing area is. So that this way the dog is in there and it has access to its water, its food, and its bed. And also can go potty if it has to. And that's the thing that she should have done in the other apartment, but she didn't. Then I let my um, tenant know that lives in the apartment house. I did tell him that in January I was planning on putting the house up for sale. And he wanted to know what happens to the tenants. And I says, well, we can put it in the agreement of whoever buys the house that he stays until he doesn't want to stay. And this way, I says, they usually like it when there's somebody in the house that they're, it's a rental house. They like it when people are in it because then they don't have to look for somebody to rent. And so that's, we'll put that in the thing, but that won't happen until January because Emily can't move out of her apartment until uh, the other tenant moves out of the house. And they won't do that until the school break, which is over, e over Easter, listen to me, over Christmas, over Christmas break. And so when they move out, then she can move in. And then in January, I will put the house on the market, the one, the big house. I don't, that's the, the one that's on a corner lot and it's extremely expensive. So if you ever buy a house, don't buy a corner house because you pay more because of the frontage. They they um, tax you for the frontage on each street. I didn't think of that when I bought that house. But I think of it now. Every time my taxes come, it's the taxes on that house. It's got on a very small lot, but their taxes are as high as my taxes here. And I have a very large house and I have two acres of land, 2.2 acres of land. And that house is costing me just as much. Um, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say. So I will talk to you all again tomorrow. And you have a great night. Bye-bye.